Honestly, Red Riding Hood was rotten. The story of Little Red Riding Hood, as told by The Wolf. It's by Trisha Speed Shaskin and illustrated by Gerald Gurley's Chop Chop. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just finishing my lunch. My name is Wolf, Big Bad Wolf. You may have heard the story of Little Red Riding Hood about a girl and her granny. Seems everyone has. My tale is different. Did I say tale? I mean tail. Get it? Because tail is the thing at the end of a wolf's bottom, his rump. And tail, this tail, is a story. They're pronounced the same, spelled different. They're called the homophones. They say the same. They sound the same, but mean totally different things. Anyway, once upon a time, I ran out of food. Completely. The cupboards were bare. The freezer, too, and I'd eaten every last vegetable and fruit in the garden. Every one. Other wolves might have lunched in the, on the forest critters. Chipmunks, bunnies, squirrels. But I'm a vegetarian. That's right. I don't eat meat. Well, I try not to. I love apples. Honeycrisp, pink ladies, golden delicious, any kind. Really. But sadly, it was a long time until apple harvest. I hadn't eaten in weeks. My stomach growled and howled. It moaned and groaned. It even roared. Then my nose took over. <laughs> I took a whiff. What was it? A girl. <laughs> I took a whiff. What was it? Cake, butter, in this forest? I had to investigate. And there she was, Little Red Riding Hood. She looked as plump and juicy as a big, sweet apple. Little w Red waved her cap. Isn't it pretty, she said. Yeah, I said. Aren't I pretty, she said. Was she admiring herself in that puddle? With this cape, she said, I'm even prettier than usual. Boy, someone sure was full of herself. My stomach growled. What do you think he's going to do? Little Red twirled a strand of hair. Mother says the cape looks great with my skin. My skin shines like pearls. Or the meat of a ripe apple, I thought, licking my chops. Remember, I hadn't in eaten in weeks. Time to chomp. But then Little Red said, I can't wait until Granny sees how pretty I am today. I'm bringing her cake and butter from my mother. My stomach howled. Two meals, I thought. Granny for breakfast, Little Red for lunch, and cake and butter for dessert. Where does Granny live? I asked. Little Red pointed. Down there in the clearing, the brown house. I knew that house. I had a plan. This path, that path. Let's play a game, I said. Little Red smiled. I'm awesome at games. I bet you are, I said. You take this path and I'll take that path. And let's see who arrives at Granny's first. I will, she said. I'm the prettiest and the fastest. I bet you are, I said. My stomach moaned before it groaned. I ran. No one knows the forest like I do. I chose the shorter path. Well, he seems pretty clever. <laughs> I took a whiff. What was it? Apple air freshener? I knocked on the door. Who's there? Called out a voice. Your granddaughter, I squeaked. I have brought you cake and butter from mother. Doors open, Granny said. Oh, what's Granny doing? I love how they give us little clues. Granny tugged at her nightcap. Green, she said. Isn't it pretty? Pretty like Granny Smith's apple, I thought. Aren't I pretty, Granny said. You must have heard the saying, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Well, it's true. Chomp, chomp. I had to eat her. She was no Macintosh, but not too bad. I still felt hungry. Oh, I missed some sentences. My stomach roared. What's that noise, Granny asked. Chomp, chomp. I had to eat her. She was no Macintosh apple, but not too bad. I still felt hungry. Little Red knocked on the door. Who's there? I called out, crawling into Granny's bed. Your granddaughter, Little Red said. I've brought you cake and butter from Mother. Doors open, I said. Little Red walked in and caught a glimpse of herself in the mirror. 
Isn't my p cape pretty, Granny, she said. Aren't I pretty? I clenched my teeth. <sniffs> Granny, Little Red said, what deep dark I eyes I have. Mm, I said, the color of apple seeds. Granny, she said, what perfect ears I have. Mm, I said, shaped like sharply cut apple slices. Granny, she said, what pretty red lips I have. Mm, I said, red delicious. Granny, she said, what lovely skin I have. Look at the wolf. He's sweating. So excited. Chomp, chomp. I ate her up. What can I say? Things look different when you're hungry. She was no Fuji or Crispin apple. In fact, to be honest, she was a bit rotten, but she was better than nothing. Plus, I got dessert. Think about it. Read a classic version of Little Red Riding Hood. Now look at the Big Bag Wolf's version of the story. List some things that happened in the classic version that didn't happen in the wolf's version. Then list some things that happened in the wolf's version that didn't happen in the classic. How are the two versions different? Well, this sounds like a compare and contrast for those of you that are experts at it because we've been working on it all month. If, I had been, if it had been apple season, do you think Wolf would have eaten Little Red and her grandma? Why or why not? Good question. I do like the fact that he listed all different kinds of apples because we live in apple country. The classic version of Little Red Riding Hood is told from an invisible narrator's point of view. But Wolf's story is from, the point, from his point of view. Which point of view do you think is more truthful? My students have been working on point of view for months. So what they mean to say is first person is a story that you tell. This is a first person narrative. The wolf is telling the story about himself. But here's the thing, he's also talking to the audience, you the reader. Here it is, what can I say? He's talking to you. So you could say it's second person, where the person in the story is talking to the reader. Third person is when it's told from outside, just like other versions of Little Red Riding Hood that we've read, like the James Marshall version. How would other fairy tales change if they were told from another another point of view. For example, how would Cinderella's story changed if one of her stepsisters told it? What if the baby bear and Goldilocks and the three bear told that story? Here's an option for those of you who really love to write. You can write your own version of a classic fairy tale from a new point of view. Nice job, friends. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed today's story. Honestly, Red Riding Hood was rotten.